How's it going, everybody? Starting the new project there now. As you can see, I got a nice table built. It's a four foot by 18 foot. It's going to be my airplane build table. I'm building a Wag Arrow 2 plus 2 or Sportsman. Basically, it's a Piper PA 14. They changed a few things, but most of what they changed, I'm going to be putting back. Yeah, these pictures are kind of... I'm not going to do up that folding turtle deck there they got done. But yeah. This is it. A few specs there, you can... Pause and read them if you want to. But that's what I'm working on right now. Laying out the, uh, well, this upper section here. You build the top first, you remove it, build the bottom, and then you use these jigs jig the top up and then you put in all your diagonals to join the two yeah it's two by six top four by four legs I got five eight studs in the legs for leveling uh, I cut off a hundred foot tape and glued it screwed it onto the edge here this is my last ones I'm gluing here now for measuring, center line down the table. All I did was stretch a string down, clamp it at either end, and then just lock down the table with a uh, can of spray paint. Works out okay. So, you get your center line to work off of. You get a tape that doesn't move, so any measurements you get are always gonna be from the same place. And if you want to measure across, just take a square and wherever you want it. And then you got your measurement going in as well. Yeah, I don't know if I said it already. The top is three quarter inch MDF or fiberboard or whatever you want to call it. And my tubing is up there. So, 4130 chromoly, few, well, a bunch of different sizes, you got a bunch of diameters and you get a few different wall thicknesses, most of it is 035 wall thickness, but there is some thicker stuff here, if I can find it, 030. Uh, anyways, there is some thicker stuff. I think the next size up is 047 or something like that. So this is going to be a lot of diagonals and stuff. D4 main lodge rods are right there. The aluminum is my wing spares. And then I got a bunch of sheet metal there. I don't know. A bunch in behind. It's for fittings and brackets and tabs and stuff like that. And then Aircraft Brew sells these nice little boxes. Box ain't gonna take one hand. I guess sold by the weight, you get 10 pounds of just cut off. So. So it's nice if you just need a little piece for a bushing or a tab or something stupid. Well, hard to make a tab out of a round, but yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. There's a little practice while I done just focus. There you go. Come on. And that came out pretty good considering that 
as you can see I never cleaned up the tube or nothing and the coping was done pretty rough I just hacked it with a, uh, a pair of sheet metal snips actually same as that actually it might have been that exact pair so yeah that's the new project I've never really built anything from plans, so this is gonna be a new, uh, new adventure for me. But I probably should have started with a first airplane with a bit better of a kit. Well, this is not even a kit. Way girl, you can buy just the plans like I did. Buy your material from somebody else. They do sell a material kit. All the tubing comes just like I got it. It's just lengths of tubing but it comes with a lot of the uh, brackets and stuff already pre-made yeah like all this stuff the wing attach fittings comes pre-bent rear spar uh, the horizontal stabilizer all that comes already pre-cut pre-bent so it saves a lot of work there I opted not to go that route because I'm in Canada. All this stuff is in the U.S. Shipping is extremely expensive. And I was making a trip to Ontario, Canada anyway this summer, or last summer. And that's where Aircraft Spruce is, so I opted just to pick up the tubing there and bring it back. I was short some. I did have to get some shipped in because they didn't have it all there. And just to get that little bit of tubing shipped in, was almost just as much for the shipping as the tubing itself. And Wagero has a bit of a weight on their tubing kits, apparently, which wasn't a big deal for me, because like I said, I've had that material up there on my wall now for a good three or four months. Another option, they do sell a pre-tacked fuselage. The price goes up exponentially when you do that. Same, they do have a fully welded fuselage. So, what? problem with that is when you're going with that route you're stuck to these plans exactly and I'm changing a few things so that didn't really work out for me or wouldn't have worked out for me uh, these two plus twos they'll use the wings off of a PA-18 Super Cub PA-12 PA-14 the plans and the comes with this is for a wood wing there's no flaps. They omitted the flaps. Well, I don't know. They added spoilers. Most people do put flaps back on. That's one change between the 14 and this. They got rid of the jack screw for the horizontal stabilizer for your trim. And they want to put a trim tab on it. That's another change. And most people, and myself, I'm going to be doing a uh, jack screw again. It's more, it's better aerodynamically. It's a little more robust, if you ask me. Uh, what else is different? Landing gear is different. They use like a Super Cub style landing gear with a Cabane V and your die springs or bungees outside in the airfoil, which is something I would have done anyway. That was an improvement for the better. Uh, what else did they change? Landing gear tail no flaps uh, I think that's about it really well they added the second door I don't think the PA 14s came with a door on the uh, right hand side they might have I can't remember most have them added now anyway but that's something I'm gonna be changing if I can never find it Okay, I'll just use this picture. Anyway, on the PA-12s and 14s, you can see how the bottom door is triangulated after. Uh, I believe it's Charlie Center. Got an STC. I don't need the STC for this, but I'm going to basically copy with date on. Door post will come straight down and come straight over. It's a cargo door. It just squares off, gets rid of this triangulation. So I'm going to be doing that. So I have cargo door on both sides. And I'm going to be building a combination of a PA-14 and an 18 wing so I'm going to be using the metal wing 
Oh, WAG does sell an extra set of planes if you do want to build a metal wing and they do sell a material kit for a metal wing. It comes with the spars and the ribs and all that. I don't know if that one includes flaps. I don't think it does. So yeah, you can go metal or wood with this. So I'm going to be doing, like I said, a metal wing. Uh, I'm going to do longer flaps than the stock 14. I'm not quite sure what exact measurements I'm going to do, but it's going to be around 50-50 for flaps and ailerons. I'm uh, not cutting the spars. The spars are going to stay the full 17 feet. And they'll be squared off on the wing tips. Yeah, what else? Motor. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with an 0360 like homing. 180 horsepower or better. I really want to get close to the 200 mark. But I got a quote on an Aerosport engine. It has 195 horsepower to hold. 375 or 395 i can't remember the cubic inches on the one i got a quote for but it wasn't cheap let's just put it that way there's a lot of extra money compared to buying either a low time 0360 with 180 horse or even a new one or remanufactured for that matter so for the extra 15 horsepower that i get from that i can't really justify the over double the price so it'll probably end up being 180 but who knows by the time i get this done quite honestly this might possibly end up getting a yamaha apex motor turbo yeah they're starting to get a little popular i'm starting to get a little more confident in their reliability on the gearbox and such so who knows she might get that. I have a buddy of mine right now building a Murphy Rebel with a turbo apex motor. He's got the snowmobile turbo set up on his. It's not the edge performance one or anything, but we'll see. When he gets that flying, I'll go flying with him, see what he thinks of it. Curious how it's going to do in a heavier airplane. It's great in a Kit Fox or a Highlander or something like that, but in these heavier four-place planes, I don't know. 300 horsepower is 300 horsepower, but the uh, couple hundred horsepower that that Cummins makes compared to a couple hundred horsepower in a Civic. I don't think a Civic's going to tow as much as that. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. That's uh, down the road things. Yeah. As you can see, I got a lot of work ahead of me. Landing gear. Like I said, it uses a PA 18 style gear. Actually, the gear legs are PA-18. They'll bolt right on. And you just got to make your own cabane V and uh, your own uh, struts, I guess you'd say, or bungee setup. I have it all anyway. I actually already own two sets of 18 gear. As I said, Atlee Dodge Heavy Duty Extended, 3 inch. That's the Cabane V there. That's for PA 12, but it also fits PA 14. PA 12 and 14 got the same uh, bottom section of the fuselage. And those are Atlee Dodge. That's safety cables. My skis, my wheels for my 12. And. Alright, you can't see them, the mats are covering it up, but there's another set of 18 gear legs over there as well. And that's the stock ones there for the eight, 18 gear legs that are 3 inches shorter than my extended. But yeah. So, that's the plan for that. For the winter time. Summertime, it's going to be on floats. I'm, on, I'm torn between possibly using my PA-12 as parts. I'm not going to get into that why, but if that happens, i got to set EDO 2000s on 12. Those, you can separate them at a... Uh, 
one of the bulkheads and the floats and the ads in a filler section. So that'll be that. I think that brings the floats up to like a 2200 or 2500 or something. I can't remember now, but that's doable. If I got to buy floats, I'm going to buy a set of uh, Ed Peck floats. They're an EDL copy. It's made in Nova Scotia, Canada. They're a copy of, or similar to an EDL 2000, but I think he makes them wider instead of longer. Well, they probably are a bit wider too, or longer, but I'll probably go with a set of his floats. And what else? Covered the engine, covered the floats, covered the wing. Tail is going to be, like I said, a PA18. Exactly the same. Electric trim, jack screw. Uh, for, like I said, the door opening is going to be a cargo door. I'm doing the L21 style greenhouse. So it'll be skylight back to around here, I think. I'm pretty sure it goes back to that uh, cluster there. And then side windows, I'll be glass. Seaplane style doors, so they'll hinge upwards. And same thing, that'll be aluminum frame, all plexiglass. So, should be lots of light, lots of good visibility in it. Seats, I'm gonna do, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna try to do a Piper style seat rails. The Cessna's got a few ADs on them. I haven't checked the Piper, but I'll stick with Piper seeing as I'm building the Piper if I can. So I've sliding seat rails, which is good. Because these 14s, and although they do call it a four place airplane, the front seat and both seats actually are a bit tight for two adults. In this day and age, well, it's not bad for me. I'm not very big, but if you got two bigger fellers in the front seat of these planes, it's not very good. But sliding seats, it's not bad because you can put one person here and then your passenger can be back a little bit and your staggers your shoulder. So. Makes it a little more comfortable. I don't really intend on hauling four people around in this. It's gonna be a comfortable three-seater. The PH12 I got now is technically a three-seater, but really it's comfortable for two people and three people if you really wanna get two passengers somewhere at the same time, you cram them in there. It's not ideal, but. And honestly, for the most part, I'd say a lot of time this airplane, the back seat's not even going to be in it. That's another nice thing about the 14, the PA-12, the back seat behind the backrest, there's a steel bar there. And it's always there, it's welded in. There is an STC that makes it removable for loading, but it has to be in during flight. Which I don't understand, because Piper took the PA-12 PA and made the 14. And all they did was widen this tube right here. That widened out, and it just tapers back and tapers back to the same dimensions as the 12. So the back seat on the 12 is the exact same. And on the 14, they upped the gross weight for the uh, extra passenger. And for some reason, that bar behind the rear seat, they just removed it. Well, there's two tabs there that a tube just slides into to hold the backrest up. But you can take that and fly around all day long, and it's got a hard gross weight. It came right from Piper that way, so. So when I'm using it, from here back, it's just gonna be a flat floor. Great for putting whatever the hell you want back there. So, I'm gonna finish leveling up this table now today. I'm not gonna show a video of that because I'd have to reposition the camera 30 times. But I'm just gonna go around with the four foot level and probably a couple other smaller ones I got here, two foot, and then I got a one foot stair at bench top. But it's not that bad. It is off. So anyway, I'll go down this thing, level it in the X direction, then I'll level it in Y. Or I might do Y first and then X, I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to get that leveled up, and then I'm going to start uh, drawing out all my lines for my uh, top section. 
get the lines runs laid out and then try and figure out what I got to do. Because that's one crappy thing about these uh, wag girl drawings. There is no builder's manual. It's up to you to figure it out. If it's not drawn on here, you got to make your own decisions and figure it out yourself, basically. All you'll get every now and then is first couple pages got a few like little hints and hint, hints and stuff like that. Like a build top fixture first, tack well top, remove from jig. Then use fixture for bottom and joining. Be sure to locate new stations. All dimensions are center to center, otherwise noted. And it's just, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't tell you how to do it. It's up to you to figure it out. Like this. Detail C here is uh, this one. As you can see, it's a block with a little bit of a taper. It goes under the tail post lines, runs, but it doesn't really tell you if it gets bent at one of the stations. I know it's up here, it gets bent at uh, station three and then angles up and comes up like that. But for the back, I don't know if you just let the tubing sag and touch wherever or I don't know. It doesn't really make much sense to me because if you just let this sag and don't actually induce a bend into it, when you remove this structure, it's just going to relax and go flat again. And when it comes time to put it in these bulkheads, that's going to line up the top section to do whatever it needs to do. So I don't know. I can't figure it out. I can understand the block here because that's going to hold the lower section while you're welding in the top and whatever you got set to it's going to stay there but as for the top section having that little block i don't understand it and like i said you're going to be holding these tubes up off of the uh, table and right here it's showing blocks screwed to the table that are only three quarters of an inch high and the tubing's three quarters of an inch so i can't be that far off the table I don't know. I don't know if there's supposed to be a bend at station six and go up to there. I'm going to look around online and try to figure it out. For the time being, I'm just going to lay everything out and then lay my lines around down. I'm probably going to omit that block for now because I did see uh, pictures of one guy building one and his table was shorter than this and his lines rounds were actually out hanging past the table because he leaves the ends just cut too long and you don't finish them. You don't do nothing until you're putting in your actual tail post. Then you trim up your tube on the lower end upper and you figure it all out and get that straight. It goes 90 degrees to the datum line, which comes down from here. That's just an imaginary line in the airplane that everything's referenced off. So I think I'm going to omit the block just for the upper. Who knows? Maybe I'll put it in. I'm not going to make it anyway, and I'll slide it in and see what the tubing does. If it doesn't seem like it does much of everything, if I slide it under and it makes it pretty obvious where the lines run should be bent, I'll go ahead and bend them. Otherwise, I'm just going to figure it out as I go. <laughs> but one thing I read online is uh, as long as your tail the square and lined up and everything with your wing everything in between doesn't really matter that much now i'm not saying that you can just go ahead and go willy-nilly with it and have no attention to detail and put a big curve in your fuselage but realistically it wouldn't matter a big lot it looks stupid but like i said as long as that tail post is lining up with Everything else and your horizontal stabilizers flat and level and on the same relation of angle of attack to the wing that's supposed to be, it should fly all right. So I'm not too, too worried about this inch and five sixteenth little block thing they got here. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. So yeah, that's it for this. I don't think I missed anything on my build plans here. I've told you about as much as I know. Like I said, a lot of this is just going to happen as it comes. In regards to engine and stuff like that. If I get a good deal on some other engine that 
fits this build, it'll go in. Otherwise, it'll be all 360. Landing gear, who knows, that might change. I'm probably going to keep it just PA-18 style, but who knows. As I'm building along, I might want to build something a little more extreme, something like a Super Stole style front landing gear with the Fox Air shocks and stuff like that. So, I don't know. A lot of my projects ends up progressing to be a lot more than what they're supposed to be. Like that thing, that was literally supposed to come in the garage, get the commons put in it, convert to four-wheel drive, and clean up a bit, and that was it. And I ended up getting stripped down to a bare chassis, rear axle moved back, air ride put in, cab hacked to death, fixing every bit of rust. It ended up being a full restoration or resto mod or whatever the hell you want to call it. So, who knows? That might happen with this. But anyways, if you like fabrication, if you like airplanes, if you like machining, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and have a good one, everybody.